Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. This video is entitled uh, Research Behind Brain Retraining, Mind-Body Therapies, and Cognitive Behavior Therapy. And it's my first in my little mini-series called Research with Lorelei. And uh, this video follows my uh, first video entitled My Recovery Journey from Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Using Brain Retraining and the research behind it. So um, for those people who haven't seen that video, I will put the link in the video description. So in this little mini series, I go more into de detail with the research behind brain retraining and other neuroplasticity programs and mind-body therapies. And I, before we get started, I, I got several questions with regards to different brain retraining programs after my first video. So I made a separate video entitled, Which Brain Retraining Program is Right for Me? And I, I'll put that link to that video in the video description as well. So um, my only intention in making these videos is to share my story in the hopes that it might help somebody else. I'm not a doctor, a psychologist, a registered clinical counselor. I'm not a neurologist or medical practitioner. Uh, this is just my story and some of the research articles that I find helpful. And um, so this information is for educational purposes only and any implementation should be discussed with your own medical team, okay? So um, as I stated in my previous videos, I love to read, I love uh, to learn, and I love research. So I thought I'd make a little mini series of the, some of the research, research that I'm reading that I find interesting. Now this is not an all-encompassing sort of review of all the studies that are out there because that would be way too much. So um, I've, I've chosen sort of a smattering of uh, papers. <laughs> so I, those are my favorites. I, so we'll see how many videos that makes, uh, but I'll, I'll try and keep it down. I might go through them again, kind of whittle it down to see um, which, which, uh, which, video, which research papers I really want to focus on. Um, so I've sort of uh, picked up uh, research articles, and there's, there's a limited amount on brain retraining and neuroplasticity techniques. So um, I'll present the ones that I find that are the most interesting to me. And then I've tried to pre present a few more on um, cognitive behavior therapy or CBT and meditation and different mind-body therapies because um, they are all sort of all linked together. And I'm not saying that we can transfer the results from one treatment pro uh, modality to another, but there are similarities. And, and brain retraining does encompass a lot of these different mind-body therapies. And so um, we'll sort of have to kind of pick and choose what uh, may be applicable research-wise, okay? So um, first of all, I think we need to talk about what cognitive behavior therapy is, what CBT is. Now, CBT is a form of talk therapy that um, is utilized by psychologists, psychiatrists, and registered clinical counselors. Um, it, it helps people identify and develop skills to change negative thoughts and behaviors. And it's used to treat anxiety, depression, mental illness, pain. Um, and there are thousands of articles detailing effectiveness of CBT and pain. And there are some studies with CBT and chronic fatigue syndrome and some with other conditions such as migraines. So there are some distinct differences between CBT and brain retraining programs. And, um, and there are also some similarities. So CBT and brain retraining both use what's called self-directed neuroplasticity and mindfulness. So I'll say that again. Number one is self-directed neuroplasticity, and number two is mindfulness. And self-directed neuroplasticity just it literally means that the brain is plastic that it, the brain can adapt and change as a result of experience. 
And so um, there's a lot of research on neuroplasticity and um, I won't go into details, but I'll give a couple of references in, in the description. Um, it just means that the brain has a capacity to reorganize pathways, create new connections, and in some cases even create new neurons. And what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is literally being in the present moment right now. And it's being the curious observer of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. So what that means is that um, I, I think I've, I've mentioned in my other videos that the limbic brain, the, the primitive brain, it has sort of this negative bias where it's constantly flitting from the present moment to the future and trying to look out for, you know, risks and danger. And it constantly checks the past, too, for past mistakes, so things that we can learn from, all to do with survival. And so it's constantly checking and rechecking future and past for, you know, oh, I, I ate that and so I got sick, so, you know, I'm not going to eat that again. And, oh, I, that's going to happen next week and I'm going to go there and I've got to look out for this, this, and this. So being mindful means being rooted in the present moment and actually checking what you are thinking, feeling, and doing. Now, the main difference between um, it, it, that I see is that brain retraining programs such as the Gupta program and the DNRS program and other such programs, they emphasize being mindful 24-7 and using CBT school tools and other tools 24-7 to get your body out of the fear, fight, flight, stuck overdrive and into a resting healing response. So as I stated in the first video, is that the, there's models that uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and other diseases are a result of the brain being stuck in a fight, flight, stress response and to try and get that, that stuck loop or that stuck overdrive into a resting healing state so that our physiology can normalize. So that, so the main difference that I see is that CBT is um, often, cognitive behavior therapy is often taught in programs and groups. And you know, it's, you get some homework for the week and you know, you might meet uh, once a week with your psychologist or your psychotherapist or, or um, and there's lessons and there's work, worksheets, etc. Brain retraining, because particularly in my case, when I was bedridden with CFS, I was so sick. You know, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't, I could barely walk to the bathroom. I, I couldn't um, do any of my activities of daily living, of like preparing a meal or getting dressed without help. I was so sick. My physiology was so off that I truly believe that CBT alone would not have gotten me out of there. So I sort of needed this 24-7 program where I'm constantly thinking, okay, what am I being triggered about now? What am I being, what am I fearful about now? What am I body scanning? Am I checking my symptoms? It was that 24-7 sort of, of, of emphasis and using CBT tools and other tools to get my body out of that fear and stress overdrive. So um, just to um, explain a little bit about CBT, um, because I will be referring to articles um, in the later videos about CBT research. So CBT is, um, is based on several core principles. Uh, it includes that uh, psychological problems are based in part or uh, on faulty or unhelpful ways of thinking on learned behaviors uh, that are not helpful and that people can learn better ways to cope with their problems and which ends up relieving their symptoms and be becoming more effective in living their life. And it, CBT treat, treatment usually involves efforts to change thinking patterns and these strategies might include learning to recognize distorted thinking and um, reevaluate them 
and gain a better understanding of behavior and motivation in other people. Um, using problem solving skills to cope with difficult situations and uh, learning to develop a greater sense of confidence in your own abilities. Now, CBT um, in, in BC, um, you can actually get referred by your doctor to a free eight week CBT uh, program. And um, so you might wanna check out, uh, because it's a very valuable uh, tool and it is in a majority of the brain retraining programs that I have actually looked at. So, and um, it's always, and it, it, it's got uh, so many wonderful tools to use. And um, I'm gonna give you a few examples just so that you can kind of get what, what is CBT and why would I wanna use it? So, and, and how does it sort of integrate into sort of brain retraining programs? So this book is from the CBT course that's offered to British Columbians. And um, it's called the CB, cbtskills.ca. You get this free workbook called CBT Skills Group Workbook. And um, it's a great workbook. And, um, and for example, in one of the lessons it says to identify thinking traps. So there's this, I don't know if you can see that. So that is, there's the top, the sort of 10 thinking traps. And what, um, what they may be, I'm not gonna read them all out because um, like I said, I, I really find CBT skills very helpful. And um, they, some of them might be jumping to conclusions uh, disqualifying the positive, overgeneralizing, catastrophizing, minimizing, shoulds, must, labeling, taking things personally. Um, so there's all these sort of thinking traps, um, all or nothing thinking, uh, mental filters, etc. So that's sort of to try and kind of let you have some tools of, okay, you need to be mindful. So you need to step back and be a curious observer and say, okay, what is happening here? You know, maybe my mother said, why are you cooking that turkey that way? And, you know, and I, all of a sudden I take it personally because I've jumped to a conclusion and I, my fear, my anger response is being triggered. So it's all about, one, uh, being mindful and two, to kind of identify what thinking trap you have um, gone into in the orders to sort of maybe recognize any distortions or unhelpful thoughts or unhelpful behaviors. Okay, so um, and I'm going to sort of show two more skills that um, I thought were really helpful. So the first skill um, well, one of the skills in the CBT school toolkit in this CBT course is what's called the stop technique. Okay, so let's say let's 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 use something a little bit more sort of with chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or pain. Let's say I'm triggered. Let's say I'm trying to train to sit up longer. So. Um, I start worrying, or um, so. So so it says when triggered, you use the stop skill, and so you 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 go okay. I'm starting to worry, so you stop. That's the S. You take a breath, and there's breathing exercises in most CBT um, courses about how to stop your sympathetic fear, fight, flight, stress, overdrive, and initiate, um, engage your parasympathetic rest heal response. And then you observe what's going on. You know, why am I worrying? Oh, it's, you know, and, or, you know, it could be the mother and the turkey example where, okay, you know, what, I'm, I think I'm taking this personally. You know, she might be just trying to be helpful. And P is, oh, sort of observing, you can think, okay, what am I thinking? 
what am I feeling? What am I, what am I doing? And then perspective, like, okay, what other things, how can I actually look at this situation differently? And then you get to choose what you do. And so you get to proceed. And so it's basically a way of not being on automatic pilot and um, sort of being in the moment. And, you know, for people who are not, um, you know, who have a normally sort of healthy um, bodies and minds, you know, even, so it's, it's helpful for anyone because we're all human and we all will jump to conclusions and, you know, not be in the present moment because it's been shown that um, mindfulness and uh, CBT skills can actually increase happiness. So, and everybody wants to be happy. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to show one more CBT sort of uh, tool because I find it really helpful. It is um, called Swapping Thoughts. And it's uh, you're using the THINK acronym. And so both these skills, the STOP skill and the Swapping Thoughts skill is from the CBT Skills Workbook that I showed. Um, so it's... So if you're thinking, if, if you're triggered, let's say by my mother and turkey um, example, well, let's say I've triggered and I'm thinking, okay, my mother thinks I'm worthless and she's criticizing me and she's, uh, and I am worthless and, um, you know, she, I, she thinks I can't even make a turkey right. So, you know, first of all, I'm triggered, I'm upset, I'm angry, I'm you know, I'm 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 not ha I'm not happy, and my Thanksgiving is ruined. You know, is the thought true? You know, is does she actually think that I'm worthless, or do I think that I'm actually worthless? You know, is the thought helpful? You know, maybe I'm starting to engage in negative self dialogue, like, oh, I can't even make a turkey right, or you know, is the thought inspiring? And maybe I need something. Maybe I'm thinking these things because I'm hungry or I'm tired. And is this thought kind? You know, am I being kind to myself? Am I being kind to her? You know, it just, and so maybe, maybe she's, maybe she is being critical. But maybe it's because she has so many negative voices in her head from her, you know, she's got her mother's voice in her head saying she's no good. And so she's, she's acting out and saying, well, you know, that I'm not cooking my turkey right. <laughs> so um, that sort of is what CBT is, um, in sort of in a nutshell, is that there's a lot of tools to be mindful and to you know, breathing exercises, self-compassion exercises, just to sort of have some choice and be in the moment and increase our happiness and increase uh, our ability to... You know, say no to fear and anger and, and grief and, and be in the present moment and, and choose things that, are, that will support us, ways of thinking and ways of behaving and ways of feeling. Okay, so, so um, going back to chronic fatigue syndrome, um, what happens with the, um, that stuck overdrive is that um, we need to kind of pull ourselves out of that be, uh, to make sure that our bodies can heal. Because um, if you can imagine that if you are in pain or you're bedridden or you know, you've got chronic fatigue syndrome, you've got you know, all these symptoms, the amount of real estate in your brain that that takes and the amounts of times that you could be body checking and scanning and thinking about how how to keep yourself safe and how to keep you know and so to try and stop that overdrive the brain retraining programs emphasize that you you need to do some type of daily program where you're working on CBT skills and meditations etc and visualizations etc and but the other 23 hours of the day, you still need to kind of work at what am I thinking? 
you know, what am I doing? How am I feeling? Because you can't be in putting your body in that sympathetic fear, fight, flight, stress response and expect that you're going to heal as well as if you were to stop it as much as you can. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so um, I, I'm going to use an, an example from An Annie Hopper, who is the uh, creator and founder of the DNRS program. And um, she said to me that uh, in sort of a simplified uh, example is that brain retraining is can be thought of, of training and being a dog whisperer. Um, like I said, very simplified. Let's say your dog is scared of thunder. And as soon as it, it, there's thunder, he hides underneath the bed. And he gets really scared, but then that sort of fear, fight, flight, stress response gets stuck. And he starts getting um, sensitized to fireworks, and then loud trucks, and then loud music, and then loud voices. And then he starts getting sensitized because he's so scared that he's spending most of his time underneath the bed. And then he might start reacting, maybe he might start getting up, upset stomach because, you know, all his blood is in the fear, fight, flight, stress response is going to his muscles and it's being diverted from his, his um, stomach and his gut uh, GI tract. So then he starts getting, you know, um, food sensitivities and he starts getting uh, chemical sensitivities. So the brain retraining is to actually... Get under the bed with your limbic system, your primitive brain that's stuck in the fight, flight, stress response and start calming it down and soothing it and, you know, making it feel safe using visualizations and uh, using meditation and using happy activities to sort of settle the brain down so that, you know, that the dog can feel loved and safe. And then you start bringing it out of underneath the bed and start ex exposing it to you know a little bit of noise maybe something maybe a little bit of music while you're you know calming that dog down and while you're calming that brain down saying see not dangerous not dangerous at all and start turning that noise up on that music gradually and gradually and gradually until it can actually tolerate the fireworks or whatever so I guess that's a very simplified example of what brain retraining is and um so I, I've also spoken in my other videos about how the limbic system, the fear response is triggered by sort of two main categories. One is safety, sort of physical uh, safety. You know, do you, I, I have food? Do I have water? Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have money? Um, you know, am I healthy? You know, is there any physical danger? And the second danger is sort of the worthiness danger where, um, we are programmed to evolutionarily belong to a tribe that have that bias because the, the, the success rate of survival for a group of people is much higher than the success rate of an individual. So our limbic system, our fear response, is programmed to constantly look for physical dangers and then also social exclusion danger because we want to be seen as worthy, we want to be seen as um, worthwhile member of the tribe and so that negative self dialogue is built into us like you know am i worthy do i do i look worthy am i am i contributing do i belong and how and how all that also generates our fear and um, fear and uh, triggers our fear and stress response so um, so that constant 24/7 checking of whether our fear response is is triggered or not is um, very important um, in brain retraining. And um, the last uh, sort of point I want to say is that um, the, as I said, the brain retraining will actually go through uh, gradual exposure treatment, is what some programs call it. Uh, incremental training is what other programs call it, where you're turning up that, that volume of this music or you, you know. For me, it was gradually sitting up longer and longer and then gradually standing up. And 
making sure that we're calming that limbic response and using different visualizations and, and uh, meditations, et cetera, to produce a different physiology in the brain, to actually turn off, you know, as I said in my first video about the Pavlov's dog, where you're ringing the bell and you're producing an, uncondi sorry, an unconscious conditioned response. Your brain is, you're not consciously salivating. You, you know, you ring the bell and, and you start salivating. So the, the brain is thinking, okay, I'm going to sit up. That's my trigger. How long am I going to sit up for? And it's, it's trying to figure out what the right physiology is. And so you're actually training to, uh, your physiology to, to do the activity. So gradually over time and increasing your exposure. So I hope that was sort of a helpful, um, you know, what is CBT and, and what are some of the differences just kind of before we launch off onto all this, um, onto all this uh, wonderful research. I'm going to quickly show, um, so I, I originally thought that when I, my first video I had only five principles, five components of brain retraining programs neuroplasticity, mindfulness, cognitive behavior therapy, meditation, and elevation of your mood. So I have um, read a few more papers, and I've made it into, instead of five components, I've made it into nine. And so in the next video, um, so I'm going to just flash those. So main principles in brain retraining and mind-body therapies. Um, so it's believe um, that there's a uh, misfiring in your brain. Um, two is maybe this, stay mindful and identify any triggering thoughts 24-7. Three is um, most of the programs I've read, uh, well, almost all, almost all, have a daily homework. And uh, four is uh, gradual exposure therapy, incremental training. Five is engage in joyful activities. And I've got nine now. Uh, six is to learn to deal with emotions and psychological health, um, self-compassion, etc. And number seven is uh, nature therapy. I'm including nature therapy because uh, two programs included nature therapy. Uh, eight is some kind of exercise uh, with uh, educational support that the activity is not harmful. And number nine is spiritual faith. So those are the nine sort of new principles of brain retraining that I'm going to go over in the next video. And also I'm going to take some articles that are not the Gupta program and not the DNRS program um, and go through, let's say, sort of, the uh, Ashar vid um, uh, article that I, I briefly talked about in my first video about how he got, you know, 66% of, of these patients who had back pain for 10 years, 66% of them became pain-free after four weeks or nearly pain-free. Um, and I can't remember how many subjects there was, it was like 150 or something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to use some published articles that have neuroplasticity as their basis and go through sort of the nine basic principles of how they, um, how they use those principles. Because, of course, the uh, goal of this is to get everyone over the finish line. Like we, That's the goal, right? We, we want everybody to be able to find something that we can all get better with. So I really hope that you join me um, on my next video. And um, thank you so much for joining and uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, you can message me on using Messenger to my Facebook page and it's Lorelai Lu. And I also uh, leave my Instagram um, account on the video description and DNRS members can message me on the community forum. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.